Hey guys, I'm Joel. Welcome back to a new video. In this one, I'm going to be fixing some more stuff on the E30 that I've wanted to get done for a few years now. But now that the car is down, I took this time to start diving into this and doing all the stuff that I wanted to do. I deleted ABS. Some of you guys were saying that the brakes are still going to lock up. Yes, the brakes are still going to lock up, but this proportioning valve will make it so that the rear brakes won't lock up before the front brakes. That's the reason why I spun out in front of the comp. And now this is gonna help me prevent that. Someone in the comments also said that when the ABS pump goes bad, apparently that's what makes your brake bias go 50-50. And that's really bad because when you're braking, the body weight of the car goes forward. So you want the front brakes to essentially bite harder than the rear brakes. If the rear brakes are locking up before the front, you're not gonna have as much stopping power because you're locking up the rear brakes. So I'm gonna be able to put more pressure to the forward brakes and we're gonna have some really good stopping times. I think that's gonna help a lot. I've been playing a lot on the simulator too. I've been playing F1 2021, my newest hobby. <laughs> but in this video, I'm gonna start off by wire tucking this harness right here because this thing has just been sitting there and when it gets dirty, it collects so much dust and grime on here. So if I can run this behind, it just looks so much better. I already ran two wires through that little hole right there, but I'm gonna take those out and I'm gonna try and drill that hole bigger with a step drill bit so that I can push that whole loom through there. It's gonna be tight though, I, I'm gonna have to go. I should definitely take this wheel off. I maybe should even just take the fender off too, might as well, right? Damn. These two wires can come out now, and I can drill a hole bigger. So I need to probably drill another hole on this side just so I can have a through hole and then I can feed it all to over here and then it'll go down. I want to put test tape on all of this. This was the annoying thing. The dirt and dust would sit under the harness and just, it's like sand. So it like destroys everything that's down there and eats at the paint. So now when I come in to wash it with a clean tucked bay, I can just run a microfiber through there and get all nice and clean. Since I was the one that installed this chassis harness, I know that nothing is too tight along the, under the dashboard so I can pull on this, get it all out of the way. Now I can come in with my drill and the step bit <laughs> oh no, it isn't. <laughs> the hole is already the size. <laughs> that hole is already like a 7 eighths. I should have done this from the start. In the picture, it looked a lot bigger than, than this. So I didn't even think to measure it, but I looked up another listing and they have a 1 and 3 eighths step bit. It's that much bigger than this one. So that's going to easily make this hole the size that I need. And also with this at an inch and three eighths, if it's gonna make a circle the same size, this plug is gonna fit just perfectly through that. So this is the bare minimum size that this has to be. I can wrap this now and not worry about it being uneven. These colorful ass wires were always so obvious in the engine bay. They were draped over the engine and just running over here. So I'm so happy that that red and yellow wire are mostly covered up now. What I use though is Tessa tape. I'll leave some in the description. And this is the original cloth type of tape that BMW uses from the factory. So the chassis harness comes in this already. So this is like the best thing for wires. Electrical tape gets too sticky and gunked up. I came in with the angle grinder and got everything mostly cleaned up. Now I can come in by hand. I just wanted to knock everything down just so it's smooth. And I can start fading it out. I've never done patchwork like this before, so I don't know if I need to use filler primer, self-fetching primer. And I can't remember if I should do bondo on bare metal. 
<laughs> this is all stuff that I gotta go through and research again just because it's been a little bit of time. It's extremely dusty and oily though. This should be black and it's like a brown gray. And that is the after. Damn, it's way more black now. This is the spray paint. I painted it in 2020. So this is like a two year and a half year update on the engine bay. This paint actually turned out pretty well. <laughs> it's held up to some pretty good nicks and bangs. Now this side, you can tell the before, <laughs> after. Coming in right now and I'm just trying to knock down the edges to make it a very smooth transition from bare metal to paint. And once it's all smooth, then I can start putting Bondo down. Yeah, that feels very good all through here. If you can feel an edge, then you can see an edge. This is some 220 grit and it's going through the paint pretty nicely. Not too quickly and not taking too long. I think it's sanded down enough. I'm not entirely sure because I've never painted just like a patch panel like this. I'm probably gonna come in and scuff all this up with a red scotch pad, but I only did the 220 on the actual spots that need it. Now I'm gonna come in with some Bondo. Just get it all nice and smooth. I don't care that it has Bondo. <laughs> I just want it to be somewhat smooth. The guy painting our house was using this and he told me to use it because it's better than normal Bondo is what he said. So. It's 15 minutes sandable. That's crazy. That means that this thing is gonna set instantly and I need to be very careful working with this. <laughs> Fast dry. Oh my God, this stuff stinks, yo, what? I really hope it doesn't turn into a brick right away. That would be annoying. It says don't put it on old cardboard, but that's all I got, so that's what it's going on. That's all I'm doing. It looks a little too white. It doesn't look pink enough, I feel like, but we'll see. All right, I'm gonna stop messing with it because it feels like it's getting a little bit tacky now. It feels like it's drying up a little bit. Oh, God. This shit is definitely way more stressful. I should not have gotten this fucking fast dry, yo. It's already turning tacky, what the? Okay, this is a bad idea. Do not do this. It's so messy because it's just tacky. So I can't really like refine it and make it look kind of like good. Yeah, this is so stupid. That one doesn't look half bad, so I'm leaving it like that. This is bad. The more that I touch it, oh no! Oh no! This is a disaster. Oh no, I forgot to sand it down to 80 or, or 100 grit. This is 220 grit. Damn it! <laughs> Fuck body filler, yo. <laughs> I should not have listened to this dude. He definitely just had that fast drying stuff because he was just putting it on the house and then like, real quick, it's just a flat panel on a house. You don't have to like massage the Bondo into the cracks and grooves and stuff, but on a car you do, so you want a long set time so that you can kind of work with it, but. <laughs> I touched it to see if it was hard, and it's hot as hell! Oh my, like it literally burning hot almost. That's the chemical reaction happening, but I didn't know that it was, damn! <laughs> you know I had to get the little thermal heat gun, whatever the hell. Damn! That body fill is 160 degrees! 173! <laughs> 
That's why I was damn near burning my hand. I'm hoping I don't make too much of a mess. Now it's so uneven and patchy because I wasn't able to smear it on good enough. It kept just pulling it all over. Ah, looks like shit now. Looks worse now than before. I'm just gonna sand it until it looks good. It actually didn't turn out half bad. I just literally stood with the 220 and sat here for half an hour doing exactly what you guys saw. <laughs> Sanding with the vacuum on and that's what it's looking like. I have it so that none of the edges are catching but there's some pinholes and imperfections in it, but I don't really care because once it's black, there's not gonna really be much visible. Like over here, you can barely notice these little spot welds, but it doesn't look bad at all. That does not take away from anything, so. That's thing like that. This paint and this primer is what I used for the engine bay originally, so that's what I'm gonna use again. I'm gonna come in with this red scotch pad and scuff this whole bottom pad out because I might as well should just paint from here and here back. Oops, I might have gone a little too much over the Bondo. Damn it, it the Bondo was really good before and <laughs> I should have just gone around it. It's so much worse now. Okay, I am definitely not touching this anymore. I should go over it again, but I don't care enough to. I didn't know that this was that aggressive. I got it all masked off. I've never blended before, so I have no idea what I'm doing in that department, but I'm just doing what kind of makes sense. I taped two pieces of tape together and made one really wide one and then back rolled it like this so that there's still sticky side right here. And hopefully that's gonna make it so that it's not too, too rough of a blend. And it's not just a straight line across, because that would suck. I probably gotta pull it a lot down like this and not spray directly in there is what I'm assuming not to do. I'm only gonna spray this primer right over the body filler and bare metal and where I worked over. There we go, that's coat number one, very light. Over spray. Oh my god. Now I'm gonna leave this primer until tomorrow and I'm gonna come back and that's when I'm gonna sand it down. So in the meantime, I'm gonna come over and mount my boost controller. I got this bracket on eBay. It's just an anodized piece of aluminum, I believe. And it just has the thread holes in it and it's just nice and easy. I'm gonna riv nut it up to my firewall up there. The link is going to be down in the description, my Amazon affiliate link. If you buy these through there, it's going to help me out a little bit, give me a little commission. These are stainless steel rib nuts. I like these because I don't like the option of these rusting out. That would suck. So I like having these around. Makes it nice and easy for making threads. I checked inside the cabin. There's only just some sound editing right there. Make sure there's no wires behind. Damn, I chose a horrible spot to go through. My sound deadening is all in there, so I'm gonna have to go inside and clean it out with the razor so that the rib nut holds well. It needs to be a tiny bit bigger. You can see right there, I cut a patch around the hole so now this rib nut can have bare sheet metal to grip onto. Sprayed a little bit of paint inside the cap. I'm gonna try and dab it onto that bare metal so that it's not 
bare metal anymore. I can thread on the rib nut now. Hopefully this <laughs> this shock tower does not help at all being here, but there we go. I think that was enough. There she is, that's the base foundation. There we go. I wanted to do that for so long. I'm so glad that it's done because I've always just had this dangling around. And now that this is mounted, I can zip tie the lines nice and away from the exhaust and I can be sure that nothing is ever gonna melt. The step drill bit finally came so I can do this wire tuck. I'm gonna literally blast a hole straight through here because I can't fit the drill through there and it's just gonna need it anyways. Just one big hole through across. I don't think that was a good idea. I don't think that was a good idea. That metal's a lot thicker than I thought it was. <laughs> I saw the sheet metal in the engine bay. <clears throat> I saw the sheet metal in the engine bay and I assumed that the outside would also be that thin. But it's not. This outside is actually way thicker. And now that it's cutting into this support right here, this structure, I don't want to keep going through that. It's the next day now. It's so rough. I'm hoping that this is going to clean up a little bit because you can hear it and see it. What the fuck? It's all over spray. So I need to go in and sand all that down. Oh, up here is pretty good though. This is about what I was expecting, so I'm happy with how it came out. It's a little bit rough right here but that's no big deal because I was expecting it, so. This side has so many imperfections on the tub and it's not really noticeable when there's a huge turbo in your face. <laughs> I'm praying there's not too much overspray with this. It's a very heavy first coat, but whatever. This is not gonna work. This blend thing is gonna be so bad. All right, that's coat number one. It looks pretty good now. Damn. <laughs> Last coat now. There's gonna be such a hard line when I take this off. I have no idea how I'm gonna <laughs> how I'm gonna blend that. It's gonna look so bad. I'm gonna take the tape off now because I think it's gonna crack the paint if I wait. So I'm not gonna risk it. <laughs> I'm just gonna take it off now. Ugh. Actually. It has kind of a, a hard line. So this is about what it's gonna look like. This looks so much better than what it was. So I could not ask for any better. All that was covered in weld and it has its form now. Like, look at that. Oh, you can see perfectly right there. Yeah. And now the problem area is right here. I'm gonna come in and try and wet sand it to get that out with some high grit sandpaper. But I think we're looking good here. Oh my goodness, 
that's so bad. I wish I used the whole saw. This is a disaster. Yes! I'm through! There it is, on this side, it got a little in there, but whatever. And on this side, it's opened up nice and big so I can push the whole harness through. I'm gonna give these two holes the same treatment as I did the rivnuts nuts, because I don't want them to rust. I mean, maybe I could just paint it. Hit it with some paint. <laughs> maybe I could just dead ass go like this. <laughs> okay. Wait, I'm actually getting on the inner one from out here. Hold up. Okay, I don't want to do too much overspray, so I'm gonna put the cap over it. Yo, this might go stupid. It almost worked all the way. Damn, that looks crazy now, but at least that's not gonna rust. I'll make sure to care a little bit on the side that's actually visible. It's all dried up now, and there's no more bare metal, so I'm just gonna poke the harness through now. This is proving to be a little bit difficult. The hole is a little small. I'm gonna see if it's gonna be possible though. There's no way. <laughs> this hole is small as fuck. I don't think I'm gonna be able to redirect it through this hole. There's no way that this ABS plug is gonna fit. I don't know why I'm trying, because there's too, there's too much wire harness. Okay, this is stupid. How am I gonna redirect this back through? There's no way. I don't know why I'm continuing to push them through. I'm reverting back, I'm pushing it back through. I have to just feed it all down right away. I can't pull it through this hole. This really might be the best deal that I found on Amazon that I really think that everyone should go and buy this because how have I been so sleep to this? This is crazy. It's a 48 pack of sandpaper for $5. Can you believe that? Five bucks and it gives three of every grit. Look at this collection, 5,000, 3,000, 2,500, 2,000, and it just goes on and on. <laughs> for $5, like what the hell? The link is gonna be down in the description. Shout out to Chris Fix's rust repair video because he sanded down paint that was blended out and it looked really good using these sandpapers, so I'm gonna try and recreate it myself. This sprayer is crazy. <laughs> Start off with the 15. Let's see if it's sanded enough. I don't wanna go too much, but I don't wanna go too little too. Definitely needs a little more. I can still see it. Damn, but yeah, how much is too much? Guessing I just keep going until that line gets worn down, but damn, I don't know. That seems like a lot of sanding that I gotta do. Actually, I let it dry up and it looks like it's pretty close. I'm gonna keep sanding it until just that starts to haze in the middle and hopefully that'll be enough to make it blend nice and smooth. Oh no, I might have gone through paint right there. Fuck! I should probably take this as a sign to stop now, but what the hell. It looks like it's just barely almost there. The reservoir sits right here, so all I really need to care about is this part right here. It's so close, but I don't know if I should keep going. It's so close. Ah, I think there's a saying, you should have stopped while you were ahead. <laughs>
I could stop here and still have paint on my panel, or I could try and get it perfect and blow through the paint. I got, I'm a risk taker, I gotta, I gotta risk it. Actually, I'm gonna call it there with the 1000 grit. I just sanded it a little more, but I think, oh, it's actually 1500 grit, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna move up to the 2000 grit and just continue from there, whatever. You guys already know the deal. That's on me. Damn it, I should, okay, whatever, this is. <sighs> oh, that's a good one too. Whatever, the damage is done. I'm just gonna keep going with the higher grits just so I can polish it. This is now 3000 grit, I'm gonna just go lightly. Now with this 5000 grit, hopefully it's not eating as much as the other ones so I can go over it a little more. And not go through paint, but still it's gonna go through. Regardless, I think I left my polish at home, so I'm gonna use some of these Griot's fast correcting cream. I've used it on my daily, and it works pretty good, so. I'm gonna try it here, and I have this three inch foam pad that only goes on a drill. I'm gonna try and use this and also not burn the paint. <laughs> this is, I do not like this, but it's the only thing that really fits in here. All right, now that it's all primed up, I'll just put one dot, because it has a lot on there. This is a bad idea. I, I do not like how this feels. I wish I could use my polisher, but the six inch pad is a little big on me. Normally it would work it longer with the other polisher, but I don't really trust myself with this drill. Damn, that looks like shit. Oh my, no. <laughs> no. This random orbital polisher is definitely what I should have used, but look at this big ass pad, so. <laughs> Please be enough. I hate doing that. I feel like I'm gonna <laughs> do more damage than good, but I have no choice. Ah! Oh my god, it is so bad. This is an absolute disaster. Do I just hit it with paint? This goes to show you, this is not a how-to channel, this is just a my experiences channel. <laughs> Cause I totaled this engine bay, I don't know what to do now, this is actually a disaster, but I'm just laughing it off cause that's all I can do. Really, cause this looks like shit, honestly. Wow, that looks so much worse. Uh, I mean, granted it probably won't be that noticeable once everything's in and, oh my, no look at that. <laughs> You can very clearly see that the amount of paint, I don't even, dude, just, I have no explanation. This just looks like shit. So down here turned out pretty good. I wasn't even thinking that I needed to pay that much attention up there because I was working down here, but I guess I should have predicted this out a little better because <sighs> I got these one inch rubber caps to delete the ABS holes because I'm pretty sure the sensor goes through the engine bay right into the wheel well through there so covering that hole up right here so no dirt comes through here that wheel definitely throws shit in here there it is I was looking around I was like wow these really could get filled in so I filled them in so I'm gonna leave the video at that because I really can't be asked right now I keep just messing stuff up over here the hole is nowhere near big enough to get this harness through. So I'm gonna need to make this hole bigger on the inside to fit all that through. And I really can't be asked. I just wanna get this engine rebuilt. Made my decision for my head gasket. Now I need to get all this in order. So stay tuned because we're now putting this together. If you aren't subscribed, make sure you go down, subscribe. You may think you are, but sometimes you're not because YouTube just recommends you channels that you watch all the time. I appreciate you guys so much. Follow me on Instagram right here at E30Joel if you want to stay up to date with everything I'm doing. And yeah, hopefully I can come back better than this because <laughs> this is sad and embarrassing.